I'd like to introduce Tim from the United States. Welcome, Tim. Hello, Linda. Now, you have fibromyalgia, is that correct? Well, that was the default diagnosis after everything else was ruled out. Some doctors say they don't know what I have, and then some say fibromyalgia because they don't know what else to say. When were you diagnosed with it? Uh, well, I got sick in summer of 2007, and I spent about four months going to all manner of doctors, from infectious disease specialists to rheumatologists to basically you name it. And uh, I'd say probably by the end of 2007, that was the uh, consensus. How old were you at the time? 50, I guess. 50, 51. It was summer 2007. I'm 54 now, so... And what was your life like up until you, you started getting sick? Well, you know, were you a, a really active person? Oh, yeah. Well, I work a brutal schedule. I work in live television news. I work overnights, long days, uh, rotating shifts. You know, it's 24-7 business. And mm -hmm. uh, plus, I take care of all my own stuff. I do all my own everything. I'm a real do-it-yourselfer, home repairs, home maintenance. You know, I just I was just out today putting new struts in my car. So I'm... Uh, what impact did it have on you being diagnosed? Were you able to continue with oh, that no, life? No. no, no, my life unraveled totally. I was uh, in a twilight zone of misery. I I was on tramadol and just watching the clock, waiting till I could take more pain medication. And I I I was at all, I had all the functioning of a 90 year old man basically. I, Lost all my energy, my stamina, I was in constant pain. It just felt like I had the flu for over two years, basically. So how did you learn about LDN? Just endless searching on the internet. I found some leads, and uh, I found out about Dr. Bahari, I believe you pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, I couldn't, none of my doctors would touch it. They, uh, I brought documentation, printouts, articles, and they, they looked at it and they were interested, but it was because of the way the American medical system works, they were really not willing to put their name on anything. You know, everything here is all about what the insurance companies will allow, and LDN is a non, an off-label use, so uh, they wouldn't touch it. I had to go on my own on the internet to a Canadian pharmacy to, to get uh, some and uh, basically test it on myself. So how long ago was that? That was the summer of 2009, and I waited for my vacation to try taking it, and I started at one milligram, and I noticed an improvement in about two days, uh, greatly fatigue and uh, pain. You know, the pain levels dropped, and uh, then I eventually, over about half a year, worked up to two milligrams. I've been very cautious because I had such good results at one milligram, I didn't see any reason to push. I, I've stayed at two milligrams ever since then, and it's been almost two years. Has the good effects stayed constant with you? Yes, yes. I don't know. I don't know if I should try going off it to see if I keep the progress. I really am kind of a little afraid to do that. You know, just so you understand, I was rotated mm -hmm. through all sorts of things. I was rotated through batteries of antibiotics. I was rotated through some extremely expensive antivirals, all just as experiments, just the blind shots in the dark and the uh, they thought I had Lyme for a while, which all the tests came back basically negative, a couple of ambiguous tests. But, you know, there was nothing that really was flagging, and they threw all kinds of stuff at it. And uh, it was funny that they wouldn't give me LDN, which is an affordable, you know, not especially dangerous medication. But mm. because it's an off-label use, they wouldn't touch it. Did you notice any negative side effects when you started LDN? Yes, uh, only vivid dreaming, which for me has always stayed. I still have vivid. Uh, that, that side effect has never left, but that's about it. So, are you going to continue taking LDN? I basically think I have to. I mean, I, I'll take an experiment with going off to see if I'd slide back if I if my symptoms relapse, but there's no reason not to. It's affordable, and I can get it as long as I need it. I found that Canadian pharmacy, and I have regular blood work by my doctor who is complicit with this. He's He's encouraging me, and he's willing to work with me, but he just can't put his name on it because of the way the insurance thing works. So, uh, But he gets me blood work authorized, and I know that nothing awful is happening to my liver. or You know, there's no nothing really going wrong because of it, that's for sure. So what would you say to other people who are considering 
taking LDN for fibromyalgia? I would say they really need to try it if they haven't found relief because the orthodox treatments are really few and far between. I mean, Lyrica did nothing for me. I took Lyrica for a year on face and it did absolutely nothing. A very expensive medication with side effects. I took uh, antivirals, antibiotics. I took all the home remedies, malic acid, massive vitamins. I tried all these things, and none of them produced any discernible results. LDN is the only thing that, that really you could see cause and effect, you know, made a difference. It's not well known for this. That's the problem. It, it's talked about for ALS, and it's talked about for uh, more classic neurological issues. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's, its relationship to fibromyalgia potentially has really been discussed that much. So how has your life been since you started LDN? Well, closer to normal. I mean, I'm working crazy hours again, and I'm uh, working a lot. I mean, I was filing papers for government disability at the time I, before I started taking it. I, I was really in weak shape. I mean, uh, pain, fatigue, insomnia were, were just, just taking over my life. and uh, no, It made a huge difference, and uh, there's no real downside that I'm aware of. I mean... Except that uh, it's a little funny to explain to people because it's very relatively unknown. I mean, even doctors don't seem to know much about it. Well, I'm really pleased that not only did you have to just throw away your disability forms that you were filling in, but you're able to go back to your grueling schedule of uh, <laughs> hard work. Yeah, yeah the all-American story. But, uh, yeah, I would recommend anybody who hasn't received progress, who they, they, who's been rotated through the classic orthodox medications they really mm -hmm. should consider it because it's not uh you know the dosages involved i mean not to digress but my immunologist was really a funny one he he read me the riot act and told me it was very dangerous and don't go near this uh, you know and it was all based on the pdr but at dosages of 150 milligrams a day which was mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. just had nothing to do with the ldn dosages it's just to show you yeah. Have they noticed a difference? Have you been back? Have they been able to monitor your progress? That's, that's the funny thing. My, my, my GP, as we call him, main doctor, has been very interested in monitoring my progress and has, has gone so far as to put it in my official record, which was a step for him. Oh. The, the immunologist basically ignores me. I have not been back to see him, but I've sent him progress reports and articles. He, he doesn't reply, so, uh, Mm. I think I violated his his authority by trying it, and uh, but that's what you're up against with with doctors in America. You know, they mm. uh, they answer to the insurance companies. It's, it's unfortunate. I don't know how better it is in England and UK, but uh, it's difficult it's, as well. Yeah. Although uh, you know, any doctor can prescribe LDN if they think it's of therapeutic benefit, but that's where the problem comes. A lot of them, as you were saying, have never heard of it. Well, in America, the trouble is you're going off-label, and when you go off-label, the insurance companies, that raises flags. That's, mm -hmm. that's why I think the, in America, what I, what I ran into with the several doctors I talked to, you could see the wheels turning. They're like, well, you know, this is not going to, this isn't standard, this isn't official, I don't know how I'll explain this or justify it, and they're afraid of everything being kicked back and not getting paid. That's uh, their, 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 their real fear. And mm -hmm. plus they also don't want to hold the bag liability wise if it turns out to cause trouble. And they don't know. They, they don't have experience. So, I mean, Dr. Bahari's gone. I don't know who else in this area has picked it up as a treatment. So I, I wouldn't even know who to go to if I wanted to, if I wanted to seek out formal LDN treatment. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. Really do appreciate it. And, uh, Long may your good health continue. And thank you. And uh, if there's anything I can do or any information I can provide, I would always be willing. You know, people need information. You know, about what to, if they're in the U.S. and they want the information, I gladly supply it because I think it's a wonderful potential treatment for many things. And uh, there's certainly not much downside to trying it. Yes. Well, thank you very much.